It's Halloween, so you need a spooky house in the woods with phantoms flying around it and monsters walking through the trees. I'll show you how to make it right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Amamance, in my tutorial series. Today, given that the day I'm releasing this is Halloween, I thought I would make a spooky house. It's only a little bit spooky because I don't want to scare anybody, but it is a Halloween style house for you to build in your world. I think it looks pretty good. It's got the jack-o'-lanterns, it's all spooky and looks quite nice inside too. If you want to know how to build this, you keep watching because we're going to do it right now. So we're going to start like we do any other house and we're going to mark out where we're having our wooden beam bits. Wooden beam bits, I suppose we call them wooden beam bits, the towers of wood that we use for the corners of our house. And I'm gonna use a darker wood this time because I think it's gonna be in keeping with the build. And I just wanna make sure I've got plenty of space around me. I'm gonna come up there, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and another one. Still plenty of space, yep. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a gap, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we should have a square that is nine by nine. That's what we're trying to achieve. And we're gonna go up, we normally go up four, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up five. One, two, three, four, and of course I didn't. Five, like that. And we're gonna do five in the other corner. Two, three, four, five. We're gonna come down here, two, three, four, five, and here two, three, four, and five. And then come across and just build off your cube. Just make sure you've got a relatively square build. Now, this is quite tall, but there is a reason for this because we're gonna lose a little bit of height in a minute. In my head it works anyway. So that is our build there so far. And I think with the uh, with the slightly darker looking wood, that looks all right. So we're using dark oak logs instead of normal oak logs. It's not very different, but it is just slightly different. And what we're gonna do is inside, we're gonna create just an entire level of oak planks. So just come all the way. And in the inside, I know it looks really weird. We don't do this normally, but on the inside of these um, logs we are putting in the wood as well so it's ever so slightly different to normal we'd normally leave the inside between the logs bare but there is a method to my madness do not panic I have not been sniffing something it is all good right so what we're going to do now is we're going to get ourselves some oak slabs and we're going to come out to where we want the front of our build to be. And I think I want the front to be here, I reckon. And we're going to come out with the oak slabs in a row of three, I think, like that. Okay, so this is the joy of when you're making things up as you go along. You can kind of fiddle around with it and just see how it works. And then in the middle, I'm going to put one, two, and three, and then... I'm gonna put upside down on the other side. And that brings in a natural lift into that build. So this is obviously gonna be a bit of a veranda. So that's working quite nicely. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry on this veranda type look all the way around by having another row, just a single row this time all the way around the outside. So you can see what we've done is we've lifted up the floor just one level. I'm gonna come around there. Two, there we go, like that. So it looks quite nice, I think. And then upside down, all the way around with stairs. And the reason we've got upside down stairs is I just like the way it kind of wraps over. It gives the impression that we've got um, a slightly supported uh, veranda with the uh, kind of the, the underpinning of that veranda. That's the word I was trying to find, underpinning. All those builders out there are probably shouting at the screen. And then we're gonna get 
some spruce fence. Now again, I normally would use oak fence, but today I'm gonna to use spruce fence because we are gonna create a run all the way around here like this. Again, spruce is just a little bit darker. I'm going for that slightly darker look today. To the edge and to the edge. So you can see we've there got our box shape with the edging all the way around it. Now we're gonna have a crack at the roof. Now roofs are funny old things. You can change the entire feel of the entire roof just by fiddling around with the way that blocks and steps go. So we're gonna have on either side here, look, a cobble block. We're going for cobble because it looks a little bit cracked and messy, which is in keeping with this build. And we're looking for a roof that kind of comes in and then goes out on a, almost like an inverted curve. So we're gonna have the steps coming up like this. So you can see we've got it coming inwards. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just see whether or not we're ready to put in these blocks. So if I'm just put that there like that, does that come in far enough? I think that does, yes. So let's go there and there. Um, and I wonder whether or not we put another block in like that. Let's try that. The only danger here is it could get a little tall, but we've made it a slightly taller house anyway, so it's possibly not such a big problem. And then come there and there. How is that? So you can see that kind of comes in. Mm. So just assess the shape. Is that what we're looking for? I reckon, I reckon that works okay, you know. I think that's just about right. So we're gonna come here and do exactly the same on the other side. So get yourself an overhang. Really, really important that you get your, your stairs to overhang the edge of that um, wood because if you don't, it's just gonna look incredibly flat and not remotely interesting. So get your step there, come underneath, there like that, get that upside down, and just build up the rest exactly the same way as you did on the other side. There we go, so they should match beautifully. And then get yourself whatever wood it is you want to use. I'm gonna use some dark oak, because I want this to be a little bit darker maybe a little bit more sinister and ominous and bring that across like that and wherever you have got a stair match it with a wooden stair wherever you've got a block match it with a wooden block like that now we are going to mix this up just a little bit but at the moment we're going for structure rather than aesthetic. So we just want to get the shape right and so as we know what we're doing. So I'll be back when I've done that. So one shape finished roof, maybe not the detail finish, but the shape of that roof is finished now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring into the walls a little bit more structure. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some random um, blocks along here just to give me the shape that I want to play with first. And we're using stone on this lower row. This lower row being like that. And then where we are gonna have um, a window, I'm gonna shove in that block like that. And on the sides here, we're gonna have a window. One, two, three, one, two, three. Again, these are just structural. I'm not gonna have anything on the back of here at the moment. I might change my mind. I'm not entirely sure. One, two, three, one, two, and three. Okay, so now, what we've got now is the option of changing up some of these blocks a little bit. So let's get that the like that and that. So now we can just change up the blocks, give ourselves a bit of texture by doing that. There, yeah, I think I might. Um, I might change that like that and then put that like that there. That works. Okay, and then we're going to have that is going to be like that. That is gonna be like that, that is gonna be there. Yep, that's good. And then gonna have that there, that there, 
that is going to become one of those blocks. That will be smooth stone. Right in the middle of that, we're going to shove that. That is going to become smooth stone. As is that. Okay, so we've got a nicely textured lower wall. And then what we're going to do here is with some grey stained glass, wherever I've got a step here, I'm just going to shove, not in front of it, but on top of it, a little bit of glass. Nothing on that side. And there, there, and there. And now we've got to think, how are we going to do the next bit? Now, again, experimentation is key. I'm going to shove oak as the second layer of wall actually all the way around it at the moment just to see how it comes out this back wall is going to look a little bit odd I know but we're going to finish that off fine don't worry we're going to get that there and that like that so if we then take a step back we can see we're starting to build a relatively structured area like that also just because it will help the eye we're going to come inside with a spruce door and just shove a spruce door in there like that. That will help our eye because where there's a gap, our eye doesn't quite like it. So we need to try and fill that gap up with something so as our eye can look, kind of move past it for the rest of the shape. It's just a, a little tip there for when you're building these. Get your door in as soon as you can and it will make more sense. And where well, you've got an oak plank, shove yourself a spruce plank. Like that, they're there all the way around again this back wall is going to look a little bit weird we're going to do something with that in a bit going to come here one there one there coming around and then get yourself your spruce steps and wherever you've not got spruce plank shove spruce steps and again what you've got there if I just take another step back we've now got some really great depth with a window in it with the use of these steps works beautifully and then come along this side as well do there there and there again nothing on the back but we will do something with it in a minute there there and there so that gives us what's effectively the shape of the house now it looks a little bit stripy don't worry about that that is going to change we're going to fiddle around with that to make it look less stripy but I think we are starting to get there so we have got massive great cavity roof thing going on here and what we're going to put in here is we're going to get this stripped oak wood I really like the way this stripped oak wood works it looks really good against the um, the other colors of wood I'm really really happy with it and what we're going to do is we're going to get a double layer of this stripped oak wood then we're going to get a yellow stained glass paint then we're going to get another layer of wood we're going to get yellow glass paint there there and there another layer of wood there and there then another yellow glass paint on the middle and upwards another layer of wood there 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 and there if we take a step back that gives us a really nice indentation here which I think looks really really good and what's effectively kind of a starry circle could you call that a circle in Minecraft that's a circle that is a three wide circle but a starry circle shape in a nice yellow that you'll be able to see from a long way away especially when there's some really great lighting behind it and then come along the other side repeat exactly the same thing so get yourself a row all the way along the top there second row yellow another row there 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 and there yellow yellow oh not there though yellow and yellow your wood there and there get your yellow there you could do this in another color I just think yellow works really really quite well coming up there there and there and you've got a really nice kind of see it from a long way off we're going to light up the inside so it looks really really special and that is going to be quite a nice and possibly a little bit spooky I think too and we're going to get that light in there and we are going to use glowstone because glowstone is quite a decent uh, combination with what we've got here so let's come inside our house open it up and because we've got a double layer here um, we can put glowstone it's not going to glow too much through the wood sometimes the problem with wood is you get a glow that doesn't really work particularly well 
and then we can just row that off with another layer of wood in there like that and that will create a really nice kind of lit glow all the way along and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a little bit of spruce wood fence and we're going to run that spruce wood fence all the way along the top of that and similarly on the other side all the way along the top of that plenty more detail to get in here yet don't you worry but it is starting to come together i think so the basic structure of the house is there we just now need to get a little bit clever with it next step is to start to put a little bit of detail into the building the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and detail up the um the roof a little bit it is a little bit too uniform for my liking so in a very similar way to the way we do with the walls we're going to intersperse with a little bit of um, different colored woods and again this is a little experimental it might not work and if it doesn't work we'll change it up but we can just swap out some of the, the steps and some of the blocks just so we get what looks like a little bit more interesting colors and you could suggest that it's maybe where on the on the roof that's got uh, just a little bit faded in certain areas like that so you can see we've got a nice kind of slightly jiggly looking roof that's got some different colors in it and I think that actually works quite well for what it is we're trying to achieve wouldn't work with every build but I think it works with this one. Similarly on the other side, let's get in a relatively random way. We want to just change up some of these blocks so as they look like they are worn and faded and looking just a little bit perhaps older, but also just giving some nice texture to the whole build anyway. So let's just shove that one in there. So there we go. And you can just play around with that as much as you like. You can say, okay, I reckon I need another one there because it's not quite um, covering itself properly. But all in all, that looks pretty decent. What I don't like, however, is that one there doesn't work. So let's shove that one back in there and we'll do the next one because that was showing through on the edge and it didn't quite work. So I'm just checking that we've not got any others showing around the edges there. I don't think we do. But that's brilliant. And then we're going to choose where we're going to put our chimney. Now, I like to start this chimney um, on steps. And the reason I want to start it on steps is because I don't want the chimney to be visible from the inside. So I'm just going to put that there and there. That is there and there. And then we can just fiddle around with the, um, the shape that we're using for that chimney. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna just make the chimney a little bit more wobbly. Let's just get that out of the way. So we can have that like that. We're gonna put that there like that, that there like that, and again in exactly the same way as we have done in the past, we're gonna shove, oh, not a trap door, we're gonna shove more stone, a bit more of that, and that is gonna create ourselves a nice wobbly where is it that's the one a nice wobbly chimney that kind of comes out to the side and we're going to do it again coming out there uh, there like that there like that there like that and just try to structure it so it comes out see that's come out too far there I don't like that at all so what we're going to do is we're just going to put cobble there and some stone there so that comes up like that and then maybe if I put that there that there I could maybe also put that there that there and get it coming out in a slightly different direction cobble that put that And then put that cobble there like that. That like that. Is that going to work? That's not going to work. 
Okay, so let's do that there and that like that. So we're trying to build up a chimney that is a little bit jiggity. So if I put that there, is jiggity a word? If it's not a word, it should be. Put that like that and that like that. So we've got a chimney that kind of comes up and out and around. It's quite interesting. I don't know if it entirely works, but we're going to go with it for now. And then I'm going to put four flower pots on the top like that, because that certainly makes it look chimney like. And then we're going to put some cobweb, which is what our cobweb was sat there for. We're going to shove a cobweb on the side of it and just build up a pattern so as it looks like we are getting a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney because I reckon there would be definitely okay so there we go we've got some smoke coming out of that chimney that looks all right so that's that detail there but what we've not done is any detail on any of the other bits so now we're going to just add a little bit more detail around the walls as well so I'm using jungle trapdoor because I quite like the contrast you get with the spruce above it and the oak behind it. It works quite well, can you see that? So we're gonna put one trapdoor next to each window side. So there's one on that side and one on that side there. Again, nothing on the back here. We are gonna do something with it, I don't know what yet. We're gonna put that there, we're gonna put that there. So we've got kind of little, pretending to be pretty, but a little bit, perhaps, a little bit I don't know, spooky is not quite the right word but I quite like the shape the way the grate makes um, works really well for a build like this I think and also we're going to put some vines on here because I reckon you need vines on all of these I mean, around like that actually we're not going to do it on the bottom because I'm going to do something else on the bottom like that Where's my, there it is. Right, so we're gonna get stone brick slab there, 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 and there. How does that look? I think that looks all right, because it makes it slightly more interesting in terms of its shape. There, there. Put that on all of these legs like that. There we go, so if we take another step back you can see how that makes that shape look just that little bit more interesting. And then we can put vines there, 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 and there. Similarly there, 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 and there. Like that. That is brill. And then we're going to get our spruce fence. And we're going to bring our spruce fence in there and there. There and there. There and there. There and there so we're starting to put some pattern into that side there 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 and there we're not doing anything on this side this is the front we want to keep that fairly clear but we are going to get some dark oak slab I think or shall we use spruce slab I think maybe spruce slab would look a little bit better where's my spruce slab it is there right so we're going to get spruce slab yep yeah, that's better we're going to put a spruce slab layer across the top of that that looks cool. And then we're going to come around the other side and we're going to put a spruce slab layer across the top of that as well. Now on this side here, we've started to got, but basically we've got a completely blank wall and blank walls don't work, obviously. We don't want that. So we're going to try and make something that looks a little bit more interesting here too. So let's get our stone brick stairs. We're going to put that like that, that like that. You can see, so we've got like an opening there I'm gonna get just a torch nothing more complex than a torch shove a torch in like that that's a start and then I'm gonna get stone bricks shove stone bricks there and there so that gives yeah just a, a little bit of extra depth and interest to that back wall. You're not going to see the back wall too often, but I think it makes a bit of a difference to the back wall anyway. Now here, you've got some choices too. You could, if you wanted to, put in, I don't know, a flower pot or something like that in there, 
or you could perhaps put in some cobwebs if you wanted to make it look a little bit more spooky. I like the cobwebs myself, so we're gonna do that. There we go, so that's there like that. And then we're gonna put some cobwebs in here as well. Perfect. And then we're gonna put a bit more cobwebbage in here. Cobweb there and there. We're gonna get some cobwebs in here too. Cobweb there, cobweb there, cobweb there. Don't wanna to put too many in, but you do want enough. There like that. That's cool. And then in here as well, just a little bit of webbage to make it look like it's just that little bit spookier. I think that's starting to come together really quite nicely. And now we just have to carry on with the detail. So now we're gonna to start to path this place up as well. Now we're not gonna do a complete path. We're just gonna shove a little bit of gravel in there just to intimate where the path is. We're gonna carry on um, some fence posts there like that. Get rid of that there like that. So that gives us a path that I think is fairly reasonable looking. I think that's an okay path. We are gonna get some jack-o'-lanterns and we're gonna put jack-o'-lanterns in the path gaps there like that. Doesn't matter which way they're facing. Actually, that one does matter where which way it's facing. We're gonna shove a jack-o'-lantern there. We're gonna shove a jack-o'-lantern there because I think actually it makes sense to have them. I'm gonna put one there too. Makes for just that little bit more halloween -ier feel. I'm gonna shove another one there and another one there. So plenty of jack-o'-lanterns. We're gonna come around this side. We're gonna shove a jack-o'-lantern in there we're going to pop one in there and in there we're going to come around and shove one under the window there like that so loads and loads of jack-o'-lanterns making this place start to look really quite halloweeny which is absolutely brilliant i also want to get just a few flowers but i'm deliberately just using these red poppies because poppies i think they've got just a, a slightly less impacting feel uh, than white and blue and yellow flower. They still look a little bit like blood because they're obviously red. And I think it works for this type of build. You wouldn't want too much color, but what you do want is just a little bit to bring it out. So we are now starting to really crack on. It is time to go inside. So coming inside, it is only a tiddly little house. It is not a big house at all, but that doesn't matter because we can still make the inside look pretty cool. So we're gonna pop that there and that there like that. We're then gonna shove a step there, a stone brick step there like that. We're gonna pop that cobble in there and then that like that. So we bring, bring ourselves a kind of a hearth area that is surrounded by these furnaces. We're gonna remove that little block in there. We're gonna shove that magma block there and put a cauldron on top of it. And you can see the magma block underneath the cauldron so it makes for a really nice glow. We're then gonna fill up that cauldron with some water and we're gonna shove a little bit of a, uh, of a fence in there just to give the impression that that is kind of blocked off and the cauldron is sort of suspended from that block there. So that is our um, half area we're then going to get a brewing stand right there i think we almost certainly need an enchantment table we don't need to necessarily put the books in but we are going to put an enchantment table in just because it's for aesthetic remember this is about the look not necessarily the function which is great we're then going to have a bed you've got to have a bed even witches sleep and this could easily be a really nice witch's house so the witch could sleep there like that there's the bed let's get us a little crafting table she's definitely going to want to do crafting without a doubt and then we've got storage as well and we can put more storage up the top like this you know what in fact we're going to do it that way with one in the middle and we're going to do one oh, one there one there one there one there and one in the middle i think that looks pretty nice and you can add 
any other little features inside here that you might like. I think that works beautifully well. I would also shove, just for fun, a little bit of a torch there. You don't need anything there necessarily, but if you wanted to, you could shove a torch in there. And because, again, this is a spooky house, we want to make it a little bit spooky. Let's do that. Let's put some cobwebs lurking around just to make it look like it's a little bit more sinister looking. Like this. And you don't have to do loads. Again, just a little bit is all you need. Like that. And we've got quite a nice looking house inside there. So that's the inside. We just need to finish off the outside now. So I think that this house is just a little bit too open with the desert to that side of it and obviously all the rest of the openness. We've got a tiny little bit of forestage on the left hand side which is great but I think that we just need to increase the level of woody surrounds of this particular tree. So I'm going to be putting some extra trees in here because I'm unhappy with the, the level of wood surrounding us. There we go. So let's just put just a few extra trees in. It's not too many, just a few, just to give it a little bit more. There you go, so we're getting that. We don't want it to be too, um, too regular. Let's shove one there. That's good, I wanted a nice big custom one like that. Um, let's shove a little tree in here. There we go. Um, I reckon we could put some spruce, uh, some birch in here as well. Where's my birch? There's birch. So let's shove a little birch tree in here. Just to add a little bit of extra interest and feeling. So now you can see just that little bit of extra treeage surrounding the house makes for a big difference for the way it looks. It's It's just got that little bit of I don't know, less openness, it's more cosy, and also if it's dark, will probably make it that little bit more spooky as well. And of course, the best time to look at a spooky house is at night time. So we have made it night time just to be able to see what this place looks like when it is surrounded by dark with gorgeous kind of sky behind it. I didn't want it too kind of murky, this wasn't a house for murky, but this was a house for dark. So this is what it looks like. We've got a nice kind of looking area. It does look quite creepy still coming inside. We've got the creepiness of the inside as well with the cauldron and the book and the bed in black. I think it looks really, really good. Let's close that door and come back outside. And you can see from the side here, it looks really quite interesting. If you came across this whilst you were walking through the woods, I think that you'd probably be right to be quite cautious about the person that lives inside it. And there you have one spooky house in the background. It could be lit up in a different way. You could do a very, very slightly different feel to the way you use the, the wooden blocks. If you wanted to make the roof slightly different with a slightly different shape, you absolutely could. But it's already had a spider come to visit it you can see in the background there so it must be pretty spooky so there you go i think it came out quite well and it is a great way to celebrate celebrate halloween which is today as i release this video brilliant happy halloween everybody if you have enjoyed this video please do remember to slap that like button it'd be great to know you enjoyed it and i'll keep on making these little quickie things also if you've not done it already please do hit that subscribe button it'd be great to see you in my sub club and i look forward to seeing you in another video you take it easy now Bye, spooky.